talk about. Um, she's quite poor. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ian uh, and this is, if this is the first time you've been here, very welcome. This channel is all about music and art and this is a series of videos about Korg's OP6 Altered M FM Synthesizer. Uh, and this is number three, four. This is num video number four. We started with a, a, an overview. We then went on and in, uh, updated the firmware We've just, in the last video, had a look at the um, sound librarian. Um, and all of these videos are, are linked in the description down below. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have a, a look at um, being able to import what's called SysX files or um, patches uh, into the OP6. Now, it's first mentioning, if you haven't watched the video on the Korg's own sound librarian, that will not take standard SysX files. Um, it takes its own sort of format, which is a, a, an OP6 library file. Uh, that's a bit of a pain, to be honest, but we can live with that uh, because there are ways that we can actually import uh, standard SysX files uh, into the OP6. Now, and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be importing and then in another video, we're going to be looking at some of the sounds around these uh, 6x files that we're importing. So we're going to be importing the standard DX7 files. Now, they have to be, there's a few caveats. Um, Korg said that they have to be in batches of 34, I think it is, 34 files. Um, and I've, I'm going to put links to where you can get all of these files from because I, I did a bit, I had to do a bit of an internet search to actually find them. Anyway, the first thing we need is we need what's called SysX Librarian. Again, link down below. So let's have a look at that. So here is the SysX Librarian uh, homepage uh, and it's very straightforward. I'm not gonna go through the process of downloading it because I've already done that. And it's very similar to how I downloaded the actual Korg files, to be honest. Um, the latest version is version 1.41 and that will work with Big Sur and M1 Apple Silicon Max, which the current Korg sound librarian won't. And if you watched the last video, you'll have known that I had to use my laptop, which is on Mojave, uh, an old Mac MacBook Pro, uh, 2014 MacBook Pro, I think it is, to actually use the COG librarian. So that's worth noting if you've got a brand new M1 Mac or Mac MacBook or the Mac Mini that they don't currently work. I'm sure COG are working on a, an, an update to this, but actually, anyway, the SysX librarian works fine. What's interesting is when I installed the SysX librarian on my laptop and I, in, I installed the latest version, it didn't work. I probably needed an older version, which I never bothered with because I got it to work fine on here. It took me a while to get my head around all that sort of stuff. Anyway, the SysX librarian, um, and there's all the sort of sub supporting documentation here. You click on download and it instantly downloads and then you go through the process of setting up. So here is my download file and here is the SysX librarian. When you click on it, it automatically opens and it just works. So you, you don't have to go through the process of uh, doing lots of installs. Now it's worth mentioning that actually what you should do with that is grab that and actually just put it in the applications folder in here. And I've already done that. So if I find it, there it is. The SysX librarian is there in the applications folder. Now I've actually added uh, a couple of files to this. It doesn't add them into the software, it just put links to them. Wherever you've got them stored on your computer, it put links to them. And the, the easy way to do that is if I just grab some, uh, I've got some SysX files in here. If I just go in, and I'm gonna make all of these files available to you. 
So um, if I go into say this one, and each one of these is a bank of uh, old DX7 files. And if I say wanted uh, bank 01, I just grab it, put it in there. It gives me the little reference, tells me that this, this is adding it to the library and we've got it there. Okay, if I want to get rid of it, literally just backspace, highlight it, backspace, and it's gone. It's as simple as that. So um, the first thing to note is that when you open the uh, SysX librarian, it says this, act as a source of other programs. Now that's not what you need. Uh, and that was the problem that I was having before. So uh, on my, when I tried it on my MacBook Pro, uh, what it needs to do is it needs to find where your connected synthesizers are. I've got two connectors. I've got a, a Mac uh, Innovation. Um, I've got Innovation. What is it? Launch key mini there connected, uh, which is sort of permanently connected to my uh, my my M1 Mac Mini and we've also got the generic USB sound MIDI sound now that is our op 6 and that is the one that we would always want really so connect it to there make sure it's connected to there it won't work otherwise it'll go through the pro let's, let's just go through, do that actually if I leave it as the act one source and I then choose the ROM 1A. Now the ROM 1A is the original DX7 Mark 1 uh, presets. Uh, and I click play. You see it goes through the whole process. It looks like it's done, but nothing actually happens on the um, OP6. So that doesn't work. So we need it set to generic USB MIDI. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose where to put them. And I'm going to put them, because I've got other uh, other programs on here, um, I'm going to choose, and I'll st I mean, the, the first 250 are the factory presets. Um, so starting 251 might be the right place to do it. In this case, I'm going to start at 400 only because I want to actually uh, keep the other files that I've got. So let's go up to 400. And you'll see that 400 is an initial file, this I, the init INIT file, which I believe is just a sine wave. So the fact that I've chosen that and I need to choose that, if I'd have left it on program zero, it would overwrite program zero. So we don't want it to do that. So what I do is press yes to choose that one. And then if I go onto here, the ROM 1A sysx file, click on play sends a message and what we see on the op6 is, is it imports this x question mark um, overwrites programs 400 to 431 so i was wrong when i said four when it was, it was 34 programs on the original dx7 it was 32 uh, so we say yes to that it's that simple and that easy and we've now got all of those original programs now it is worth mentioning that it won't sound exactly like an old DX7, mainly because Korg's FM engine is different to the original 1980s DX7. Uh, and what I'm going to do in another video is I'm going to uh, import um, a small batch of four program, uh, four files from Brian Eno, and we're going to look at them try i'm going to try and see if i can find the original recordings um and see whether it, we, what they sound like they will sound different and then we're going to play with them and tweak them and all that sort of things if i can find an original set of um dx7 sounds it might be quite a good idea in a separate video to compare them to how they sound before we start tweaking them on the op6 and see if they see if they, they actually are similar um, but that'll be that's but that's for another day. If you're not using a Mac, there will be other SysX type programs available. Uh, just do a, a, a Google internet search. I'm sure you'll be able to find one. 
Um, I only work on Mac, so I can't actually show you for Windows. I'm sorry about that. But I hope you found that this was useful. Uh, and if you like what I do, hit the subscribe button and thumbs up is always much appreciated, all that sort of stuff. If you've got any questions about this, um, like occasionally you can have problems importing software into Macs and all that sort of thing, uh, stick us a note down below and, and I'll try and answer your question. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers now. Bye bye.